We have to accelerate the rate of change, decarbonising the economy, everything else, by at least a factor of five, if not more. The only way we can do that is if we can believe we can find and trigger what I'll call positive tipping points to accelerate social, technological, ecological change. The message of the positive tipping points is the most effective change will be created by some kind of coalition of the willing actors and that includes the knowledge actors like me, academics, University of Exeter, business and finance who practically make stuff and, and finance stuff, government for the right kind of regulatory framework, all of us as consumers sometimes and possibly a role for you know faith sector or other things that shape our beliefs. The great thing is we have this empirical evidence around us, not just of the bad tipping points, but of the positive tipping points that are, have caused us to, sh to reduce the contribution of coal burning to power generation in the UK from 40% to 1% in a decade. It's caused the market share of electric vehicles in Norway to go from 1% to 84% in a decade. These are extraordinary rates of change that we have the power to spread further. You're going to need batteries and or hydrogen as energy stores in a 100% renewable electricity future. And then you start thinking, oh, well, what are the knock-on effects after that? You've got already times of the day or night where renewable electricity is overloading the demand on the grid. So why not start making green hydrogen as another energy store? And the first market for that is fertilizer, making green ammonia fertilizer. But then you expand that market, it brings down the price of green hydrogen production, it opens up the market to power ships with green ammonia as a shipping fuel. That's another big market. You get more hydrogen plants, cheaper hydrogen. Then you get the opportunity for reducing iron with green hydrogen that you've made so steel production can be decarbonised. And then you've gone down a chain that started with a sector of 2% of global emissions, another sector 3% of global emissions, and then steel 7% of global emissions, add it up, you've dealt with another 12% of global emissions, now we're getting somewhere. We need to accelerate change, so we need to understand the reinforcing feedbacks that can create a switch to a green economy, so it's all about innovation again, and that's absolutely crucial in this. I see green future solutions as sort of a crucial engagement axis with business and finance to go from people like me theorising about um, the possibility of potential positive tipping points to the practical changes in business and financial action that are going to shift them to happen sooner.